Hurricane Center and now the hurricane expert with the Weather Channel is joining us to talk about Hurricane Melissa, which uh, Dr. Nab exploded over the weekend, that uh, rapid intensification that a lot of viewers are accustomed to hearing about uh, in the past several seasons. Can you take us through that, uh, that window of about nine hours where it went from just becoming a hurricane to a major hurricane and then the continued strengthening of Melissa? Yeah, Chris, this rapid intensification was anticipated uh, to go from tropical storm to hurricane from Friday into Saturday and then Saturday night into early Sunday morning. That's when it really exploded from a category one hurricane to category four and then has continued to strengthen now at a category five hurricane. And it doesn't really have any significant signs that it is showing that it's about to go through any structural changes or any uh, major weakening. So uh, even if we have what we call an eye wall replacement cycle, sometimes it loses the inner eye wall, weakens a little bit and then just gets larger. No signs that that's gonna happen anytime soon. Even if it does, Jamaica is gonna be dealing with a category four or five hurricane in all likelihood uh, tonight into tomorrow. So the, the devastating impacts from wind and water are about to really begin in earnest, even though they've been in the tropical storm conditions for quite some time. And, and a couple of points to, to follow up on with what you were just saying. The, the rapid intensification was very well forecasted. This is going out several days back to last week when it was still kind of a struggling tropical storm. Are the intensity forecasts and the forecast for rapid intensification uh, getting better? Yes, in the last several years, I think uh, there are plenty of examples of the Hurricane Center and all, all of us in meteorology you know, getting a better handle on, an, on rapid intensification, not anywhere near getting perfect in terms of timing and magnitude of rapid intensification. But you think back to the likes of Hurricane Ian in 2022 over the Western Caribbean headed to the Southeast Gulf. That rapid intensification was fairly well anticipated and there are other examples. So at least this was moving slowly enough that you know, Jamaica has had quite a heads up on what's coming, but that doesn't make it any easier uh, in the big picture to deal with what they're about to deal with. You know, island locations, mountainous locations, uh, m much harder to prepare for and recover from a major hurricane. And because of this slow motion of this Cat 4 or 5 hurricane crossing Jamaica, uh, this is going to be unlike any hurricane Jamaica has ever experienced. And obviously, a, a lot of concerns for what, uh, how much catastrophic damage uh, there could be. The, the slow motion that we saw late last week and this weekend, what kind of strain has that put on the islands thus far, even before the storm has made landfall? Yeah, well, the, the big problem with uh, this, the slow motion is that it has already been the case that they've been in tropical storm conditions for, you know, for a couple of days now, so that, has hindered the ability to get ready for the full brunt of the core of the hurricane, but there was some advance notice even before that happened. So uh, the slow motion has, uh, has good and bad aspects. It had uh, the positive aspect of giving Jamaica time to prepare, but the bad aspect of it is the long duration of the winds and the rainfall that has already started to add up are gonna mean the likelihood of devastating floods and landslides and a longer duration of major hurricane force winds and a longer duration of the southerly flow causing the storm surge on the southern coastal area. So it's, it's already uh, been, a, you know, been bad weather for a couple of days, but I'm really concerned about this being worse than past Jamaica hurricanes because a lot of the hurricanes they've dealt with in the past were going from east to west, and they dealt with it for half a day. This is a multi-day event. And you already touched on it, the, the rainfall accumulation, not to mention the intensity of the winds that will be passing directly over the island, but you're measuring rainfall accumulation potential in feet. Take us through yeah. feet of rain in mountainous terrain compared to, say, somewhere along a flat area like the Gulf Coast. Yeah, it's, it's bad enough, you know, like we saw in uh, a hurricane, what was tropical storm for Houston, Harvey, how metropolitan areas with a slow moving system, even if a tropical storm is affecting them, can cause devastating flooding. But then you put 
a, a much more well put together system moving very slowly over a populated area like Kingston, like Montego Bay, and then you add in the mountains, that can squeeze out more water and that can cause the water to then come rushing back down in the form of you know, rushing water but also landslides and onshore flow causing the storm surge. So this is so much more difficult to deal with. Imagine dealing with a combination of Harvey and Houston and a Dorian in the Bahamas, an island environment where a Cat 5 stalled over them, and a Helene affecting the Appalachians with floods and landslides. It's kind of all of those combined into one event. So this is not like something that this area has seen ever, as you had mentioned. Well, you know, they've definitely experienced major hurricanes before, but not a direct landfall from something this strong and moving this slowly. Those are the two things that could make this uh, more damaging because you have the winds that are already tropical storm force, especially in the southern coast that are already occurring. But then you won't get the strong winds and the core of the hurricane until late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and then it's an all day hurricane event for Jamaica. Now, not every part of the island will get the same exact conditions, uh, especially you know how far west or east it crosses the island, but you, you, you don't have the strong tropical storm force winds ending until you know Tuesday night and the winds don't completely die down until later in the day Wednesday. So this is a, a much stronger, longer duration event and that makes the wind and water impacts worse than it was if it was moving along more quickly. And that's something that's, that's kind of key to this. Not only is it a catastrophic storm on its own, even if it was moving quickly, but the fact that it has been sitting over the weekend. I mean, they were already getting some flooding rains even late last week when it yeah. was still a tropical storm, but now the conditions have worsened this weekend. And you're saying not until maybe late Tuesday will they start to see improving conditions. Yeah, because uh, you can still have trailing rain bands uh, as the storm moves to the north. And so, you know, the the winds are one thing and you're going to have that strong wind that lasts all day Tuesday and into Tuesday evening, but it's still going to be windy Tuesday night into Wednesday and you're going to have two major, really three major water impacts, rain induced floods, storm surge and landslides in some spots. And so when it rains really hard and say in a place like Kingston on the southern coast, that rainwater is trying to drain back out into the Caribbean, but you have the onshore push, the storm surge, you could have double digit storm surge flooding, and then the rain induced flooding and landslides trying to go the other way. So a lot of things could pile up all at the same time. So here's the heavy rain that we get tonight into early tomorrow morning, and then you get maybe landfall, but watch what happens after the hurricane moves north. Here you still have trailing bands that last well into Tuesday night, even after the core of the hurricane has moved north of the island, there's still rain bands coming onto the south side. So again, slow motion is always worse. And with for, that, yeah. No, absolutely. And then if, if you're trying to touch on each of the, the catastrophic impacts. And then with the winds right now at 175 gusting up to 215, when you couple that with the mountainous terrain, what are the higher likelihoods of more of the island experiencing those strongest winds? Yeah, it's really important to realize that you know, we talked a bit ago about how rainfall and flood and landslide impacts can be worse in a mountainous area as, compo as compared to a flat area but the winds can be much worse in mountainous terrain. So for example, the winds of a category five hurricane, obviously, or a four, already potential catastrophic damage, likely catastrophic damage in some spots. But then you go up to the mountaintops or the downslope on the other side of mountaintops and the winds can be 30% stronger than they would be without the mountains. So we could see extreme wind speeds at the higher elevations, and that's where the complete devastation from wind alone could occur.
And you're going to see this across, not obviously Jamaica being the worst uh, of those hardest hit, but also eastern Cuba mountainous, as well as the island of Haiti being very mountainous. It's basically hitting some of the most, uh, the highest terrain in the Caribbean. Yeah, and that makes them some of the most hurricane vulnerable locations in all the world, given how strong hurricanes like we're seeing right now can occur, but the mountainous terrain adding to it. And so that's why even without landfall, you know, southwestern Haiti been getting heavy rainfall and that could continue for a couple of days. So catastrophic floods and landslides expected there. And then we're still talking about a major hurricane striking eastern Cuba as we go from uh, tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. And that could involve not only you know, devastating winds, but rain induced floods and landslides. And oh, by the way, so a hurricane warning up for the Southeast Bahamas as well. So there are a lot of island nations and communities that will be significantly affected. And this is gonna be a long, dangerous, unpleasant aftermath in these areas. It's gonna take weeks, months, or even years to recover from a storm like this. We've They're seen need a lot of help so far this season. I guess hopefully this is kind of the end of the season. Everything has stayed out over the Atlantic. This was the first named storm in the Caribbean. Does that play a huge role in the fact that that energy in the Caribbean was essentially yeah. untouched all season long? It absolutely does play a role. The waters have been warming up and warming up all season long. No other storms to take away some of that energy. And also, even if there had been earlier season storms, the waters continue to warm up as you go through the month of October. And October is often the warmest waters of the year in the Caribbean and the most unstable atmosphere of the year in the Caribbean. And that's why big bad hurricanes in the Caribbean in October, even into November is unfortunately uh, nothing new. Well, Dr. Knapp, thank you so much for your insight and uh, you know thoughts and prayers with all the folks down in the Caribbean. Yeah. And this, again, something that we'll be watching for the next several days. And then, as you mentioned, it's probably months and years of a recovery. Yeah, so whatever people can do to donate to aid organizations uh, that will be helping folks in the aftermath, we know they're going to need the assistance. Absolutely. Dr. Knapp, thank you so much. Thank you.